there and welcome to a Partners in Crime tutorial on how to make a twitch or glitch effect in Blender 3D version 2.67. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to delete the default cube by pressing X on your keyboard and then clicking delete. Next, press numpad 1 on your keyboard and then press control alt 0 to bring the camera into front view. Now go to the top left of the screen, click add and then click text. Press R and then X and then 90 on your keyboard to rotate the text 90 degrees on the X axis. And go into the top right of the screen here and select the text object data tab. Scroll down and under paragraph and the line click center. This centers the text on the origin here. Press tab to edit your text. I'm just going to type video glitch. and go back to the right of the screen here scroll up and under geometry and modification set the extrude value to 1.12 and set the bevel depth value to 0 0.02 okay now I'm going to go into the material section add a new material and go into the texture section and add a new texture change the texture type from clouds to image or movie and open the image. I'll include the download for this image in the description. Lower the red levels of our texture so that it's a bit more bluish. And now select our lamp here. Select the lamp object data tab and change the lamp type from point to spot. Change the soft size to about 0.4 and change the number of samples to 4. Okay, now I'm going to use my middle mouse button to pan around here. Bring the spot lamp up on the Y axis, rotate it on the Z axis so that it's facing the text here. Okay, zero, numpad zero to go back into camera view. Shift D to duplicate our spot lamp move it down on the z-axis move it um, to the right on the x-axis R to rotate it up at the text here RZ to rotate it so that it's facing the text more and select our first spot lamp shift D to duplicate it and change it to a sun lamp press R to rotate it so that it's facing directly downwards and at 12 to render Okay, go into the world settings, change our horizon to black so that we have a black background. And now we have our glitch text. Okay, so jump into the compositor here so we can start making our glitch effect. Check use nodes and check backdrop. Uncheck use alpha on the composite node. Add a viewer, add output viewer and uncheck use alpha on the viewer also organize your nodes and add a lens distortion node this is what really makes our glitch effect okay I'm going to increase the dispersion value to let's see 1.5 and I'm going to hook it up to our viewer so you can see how that looks as you see here it's kinda um, glitching out and jumping out at us with color here. Let's check the jitter. Now we have some little distortion dots on our text. Okay, now add filter blur. Hook it up to our composite node. Change it to fast Gaussian and blur by X on 15. Alright, now add filter directional blur. Hook it up to our composite node here. Okay. I'm going to change the distance to about 0.1. We'll go with 0.2. And I'm going to change the angle to about. 191. Alright. 
And I'm going to change the zoom value to something low, like um, 0 0.0184. 0 mm, okay. Now I'm going to add a glare filter. Okay, hook it up there. Change the type to fog low and change the quality to high. Lower the threshold to zero. This makes our text glow a bit and makes it a bit brighter. Okay, hook it up to our composite node. Alright, now add a hue saturation value node. Change the value to 2 and change the, the saturation to about 1.4 1 right so that our glitch is a bit more saturated add an RGB curves node add color RGB curves and hook it up to our viewer and composite node right now we have our glitch effect and I'm going to press B on my keyboard and left click with your mouse and drag this box here over these nodes and control G to group them. Okay. I'm going to name this Glitch Group. Alright. I have to go back into our glitch group. And now we're going to start um, animating our glitch. So it's going to start on frame 30, so I'm going to jump to frame 30. Okay. I'm going to jump to frame 33 and insert a keyframe for all of these values here. So hover your cursor over the jitter value, press I. Hover it over to the dispersion value, press I. And continue this for all the values that we've set. Okay, now since our glitch effect is going to start on frame 30, I'm going to jump back to frame 30 and bring all these. Just going to reset these values. So uncheck jitter, put the dispersion back to zero, put the X blur back to zero, distance back to zero, angle, zoom of the directional blur, and we're going to put our, um, our glare nose threshold up to 50. Going to put our saturation back to one and our value back to one. Just going to hover my cursor over all of these and press I. Yeah, I'm going to put the RGB curves factor down to zero. I'm going to drag this up a bit so that our text is brighter when it does glitch. So I'm going to jump back to frame 33. See how it composites. Alright. Go back into our glitch group and we're going to have to have our glitch effect end at a certain frame. So I'm going to jump to frame 36 and I'm going to reset the values again. So remember, have your cursor over each of the values and press I on your keyboard. Alright, now is the glitch begins at frame 30. It gets more colorful at frame 33. And at frame 36, our glitch effect will end. Now I'm going to make the text glitch twice in this tutorial, so I'm going to jump to frame 38 and insert a keyframe for all of these values again. 
So 38 will be the frame that the glitch will, the second glitch will begin. So I'm just going to insert my keyframes for these values. And I'm going to jump to frame 40. And check jitter. I'm going to make the dispersion value 3. And this time we will blur it on the Y. So I'm going to have to jump back to frame to frame 38 after this and insert the zero keyframe for our Y blur. Okay. But right now I'm just going to insert the 15 keyframe for our Y blur and for the jitter dispersion. I'm going to change the distance on the directional blur to 0 0.1 this time and the angle will be 318. Okay. And we won't have a zoom on this one. So I'm just going to leave the zoom at zero. And I'm going to bring the threshold on the fog low down to zero. And saturation goes back to 1.4. And value goes back to two. And the factor on the RGB curves goes back to one. So I'll insert your keyframes, hover your cursor over the the values I've just inserted and okay now before I forget I'm going to jump back to frame 38 and drag the Y value down to 0 and press I to insert my keyframe for the Y okay now I'm going to jump to frame 40 and see how our glitch effects look Tab to tab out of the glitch group. Okay, pretty good. Maybe the saturation is a bit too high for this frame, so I'm going to Alt I and lower the saturation to 1.1. Press I to insert a keyframe. Okay, that's better. All right, now I'm going to jump to frame. Let's see, frame 42. You want the glitch effect to be quick, like it's actually a glitch, so you leave the smallest amount of frames between the glitch effect. Okay. So on frame 42, I'm just going to reset the values for the last time here. Uncheck jitter, bring this dispersion back down to zero, bring the Y value down to zero distance and bring the glare on the fog low back up to 50 and saturation back to 1, value back to 1 and the factor back to 0 for the RGB curves here. Okay, now have your mouse over these and press I to insert your keyframe for the values. Alright, and we're done with the compositor section of this tutorial. Okay, so I'm just going to jump back into 3D view here. I'm going to go to frame 38. Select our camera, because we want our camera to just shake a bit as our glitch effect progresses. Okay, is there a location keyframe by pressing I and then clicking location? Split the screen up here. Change it from 3D view to graph editor on our second screen here. Click the location tab and select Z location and make sure Z location is what's selected here. Press in add modifier noise. Okay. And we're going to change the strength of our noise modifier to about 26, maybe a little bit more than 26, 26.52 here. 
and we're going to restrict the frame range. The end frame will be, let's see, frame 40, and our start frame will be frame 30. Okay, so let's see how this looks. Yeah, so our camera just glitches along with our compositor glitch. Alright, now I'm going to change the end frame of this animation. If you have anything else in your animation, you might want to just leave your own custom frame amount. I'm going to change the start frame to 15 and the end frame to 60. So we've just got our glitch effect here. I'm going to. Okay. And. Let's see. Okay. So. We're done making our glitch effect. Don't forget to render your file. And thanks for watching. And subscribe for more tutorials from Partners in Coordinated Rendering of Ideas, Motion, and Effects.